Hi, I'm Shanette Harper. Welcome to Alaska Filmmakers, a program dedicated to exploring the many talented individuals working in the Alaska film industry. Behind every great production, there's a great writer. Writers, like all filmmakers, can come from a variety of professional backgrounds. Today's guest began his career as a trial attorney. Working within the law gave him the unique experiences he uses as inspiration for his screenplays. His work has been translated into a visual media by several Alaskan directors. And we have him here today to tell us the stories that inspired him to become a screenwriter. Alaska Filmmakers is pleased to welcome Jim McLean. Welcome. Hi. Could you tell me a little bit about how you started screenwriting? I actually started writing when I was seven, but I came to screenwriting very late on. Uh, I was 53, I think, almost 54, and uh, I got invited. Levi Taylor was making a, a short movie, and I got invited to come over and uh, be an extra. So I went in, and they, the first thing they ask us is, who knows how to do stage fighting? And of course, my hand went up because I had had uh, been a, uh, I actually had an, uh, a theater department in my high school in Oregon. And so I knew how to do stage fighting. It's one of the things we learned. And so I said me, and, and they said, well, you're now principal extra. So I spent a couple of days on set and mostly watched the crew because in a, in a previous lifetime when I was an undergrad in college, uh, I did a lot of theatrical lighting and stagecraft to, to make extra money. And so uh, I fell in love with the medium. But I have this problem. I have tried acting in the past, and I was a pretty good actor, but I couldn't memorize the lines. And so that was out, and uh, with my cane and being pretty stove up, old fat man, I can't climb ladders anymore or do a lot of the things that the crew has to do, so I thought, well, what can I do? Well, I'd been doing legal writing as a paralegal and then as an attorney and then again as a paralegal uh, for about 20 years. And so I decided, I'll try writing. So I wrote a really forgettable feature film, feature script rather, and learned a lot of stuff and read a lot of books. And then uh, I wrote another one, which I liked a lot better. and. Uh, that's basically uh, how I got into it. I've never had a class in screenwriting. I've never been to film school. I'm not one of those people who has that experience. But I apparently have a, a pretty good facility for uh, doing dialogue and for uh, putting, putting films together. So that's how I got here. How long have you lived in Alaska? Let's see. We moved up in 1978 we, uh, to Ketchikan. We lived there five years. I, we, we were in Oregon and had just had our daughter. I called up, a, I had been up once before and had a job in a supermarket. And so uh, we were, I was working two jobs. And so I called them up and said, can I come back to Alaska? Can I come back to work? And they said, sure. So we landed on the pier and off the ferry in Ketchikan, 1978 with three duffel bags, two backpacks, four guns, my six-week-old daughter, and a hundred dollars in our pocket. So it's been pretty good to me. What led to you becoming a trial attorney and what are some of the experiences that you have with that? I got my undergrad degree at UAF, 35 or 36 years old, something like that, when I got it, and found out that the cutoff date for work getting a federal job with a criminal justice degree is 34. So I was kind of stuck. And so I got, I got an opportunity to basically audition with an attorney uh, to be a paralegal. And he was at the law library. I showed up and he says, you've got an hour. Uh, find me three reasons why you can do this one thing that I want to do. So I, in about 40 minutes, because I was trying to impress him a little bit, I, f I said, you can, do, you can do A, you can do B, but you can't do C. And he says, show me. And I showed him, and he said, okay, I'll hire you. So I worked with him for a couple of years. 
And then I went to work for another attorney for a number of years, and uh, everybody was saying, Jim, you're too good at what you do. You need to be, you, you know, your, your research is, is right on. Your, your writing is great. You need to go to law school. So I went to law school. How did you get involved specifically in local filmmakers, like with the local? Alaska, or especially Anchorage right now, is a, is a very wonderful place. There are an awful lot of people who are interested in filmmaking. There's some very talented people, so, you know, and I, I'm a little bit forward, I guess, and, and so it wasn't hard for me to meet people. Um, so I met various folks, and uh, I had a, uh, I had some scripts that people read, and then a couple people asked me to write shorts. So I wrote a couple of shorts, and we won some awards with the with two of the shorts that I wrote. And I wrote uh, Mike Bergstrom. I was on Facebook, and he said, "Does anybody have a vampire flick?" And I so I called Mike up, and I said, "Well, Mike, I don't have one, but I can write one." And this was in the early spring, and he says, can you have it by August? And I said, yeah, I think so. So eight days later, I handed him a script uh, for, for a feature, and he loved it. And so it's being made here, Snow Angels, it's being made here in town right now. And then I met uh, Ron Holmstrom, I can't remember where, but someplace along, oh, I know where I met Ron. Anyway, I met Ron at uh, ACT when he was a ma the manager there, I wrote one for, that Ron liked, so he optioned it, and then I got thinking. I was a trial attorney. I should, and and I have some fun stories about when I was a trial attorney, etc. And so I uh, wrote uh, the Doppelganger Principle, which Ed Asner just signed on to star in. And uh, I showed it to Ron, and he fell in love with it, and we got it to Ed through various vicarious means and. People who knew people who knew people, etc. And uh, last summer, I got a phone call at seven o'clock in the morning from Ed, or ten o'clock in the morning rather, from Ed, who uh, told me that he thought the script was stellar and asked me of all things if he could uh, star in it, uh, which I thought was a little peculiar because uh, screenwriters are pretty much the redheaded stepchild children of of the film industry. So it was it was pretty neat. With your scripts, how do you usually, how do you begin writing them? What's your process? What I usually do is know what the beginning is and then know what the end is. Once I've figured those two things out, then I, keeping in mind that I'm telling a story, and that's the most important thing, I uh, fill in the middle. Uh, I learn who the characters are and I, and I think about them once I know who this character is going to be. And, and I, you know, I, I decide, okay, well, where were they born? What did they do? Who are they? Who are these people? So that they're all individuals. And uh, then I have them, I put them in this situation with, you know, the, the conclusion way down the line and see where it goes. And it works for me, and I guess that's the most important part is that it does work for me. How many scripts do you have in production so far? Well, I've got, I've had actually two shorts made. I have my own IMDB page, it's so exciting. And I've got another one being made, another short being made in Virginia right now by a guy who uh, did uh, computer graphics for a living and he wanted to direct his first short, so I sold him that for the huge sum of $100. And then we've got Snow Angels, which is in production, and we've got the Doppelganger Principle, which is in pre-production right now. That's the one that Ed's starring in. So that's basically what I've got. I've optioned a couple other films, and we're working on that. And we'll see what happens. And how much research do you do about a subject before you begin? Well, a lot of it depends on the subject. Uh, I know a lot about Alaska law. I have, you know, I wrote appeals for many years. I've I was a trial attorney. Uh, I did a lot of legal writing for a long time. So for Doppelganger, there was just one scientific issue I had to check out for sure, and I did. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because it's, it's part of the, the story. Um, when I wrote my, I wrote a period piece called Reflections in an Hourglass, 
And it took me about six or six or eight weeks to write it, but about half that time was checking to make sure that none of the language I used in it was in the lexicon after 1550, because it's set previous to 1550 in London. And so I wanted to make sure that I wasn't wasn't stepping on the on the 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 language. You know, it's just it, it depends on the film. I'm very careful to make sure the film is correct. You know, I, one of my biggest uh, peeve, pet peeves in life is all the Alaska films that have sheriffs in them. Uh, it drives me crazy because there are no sheriffs in Alaska. There are no counties in Alaska. So, uh, you know, and, and you, when you get some Hollywood writer who's never been here and has no idea what the people are like or what the system's like, you know, uh, they mess it up. And it may not be important to most people that view the films, but it's important to me and important to the people that really know what's going on, so. So, what advice would you have for upcoming screenwriters? Write. Writers write. Uh, that's the, the very first thing that I, that I tell. I get people all the time saying, you know, I want to be a screenwriter, or I want to write books, or I want to write whatever. And I ask them, well, what have you written lately? Well, well no, nothing, but I want to be a writer. And I say, okay, well, writers write, and that's how you learn how to do it. I started writing, well, I read my first book when I was about four. I remember the name, Danny and the Dinosaur. And I started writing when I was seven, and I've been writing ever since my whole life. And I'm now 57, so uh, I've got 50 years of writing in. Writing involves a lot of work, and you need to, in fact, do that. I also tell them to, when they're doing dialogue, if they're going to screenwrite, when they're doing dialogue, listen to how people talk. People talk in chunks. They don't talk in full sentences. They certainly don't talk in speeches. And, and so you listen to how people talk and write that way in choppy, small pieces and, and, and then do it out loud. If it sounds awkward, it is awkward. Uh, and it'll certainly appear awkward on the, on the screen. As a, as a screenwriter, you give a clue to the directors what it looks like visually. You know, you have a paragraph saying, well, this is what the, this is the setting, but it's really up to the screenwriter or the, the director and the cinematographer and the, those people to decide what it really looks like to them. And then all the, the only thing you have otherwise is dialogue. And so you have to make it sound like people. If you don't make it sound like people, it's horrible. Uh, people are generally pretty sloppy in how they speak. Uh, and then you have to dialect cues in what you write. I mean, it's, it's a very involved subject that I've looked at a lot. Like I said, I've never had a screenwriting class, but I've looked at it a lot. And so I, I uh, you know, it's based mostly on listening to people talk. And, you know, and I go to a restaurant. I'll sit there and listen to the people next door. I know it's rude. I, you know, I'm not commenting on them, and I'm not particularly, I don't particularly care about what their lives are about, but I'm listening to how they talk. And, and, and you know, uh, actors deal with mannerisms and very visual stuff, plus a lot of the, the, the dialogue stuff. But writers, at least good writers, I think, are careful to put those clues in and to write in the way that this person, as you see this person, is, where they came from, who they are, who their parents were, where they lived. And uh, so you write for that. For most people, watch a lot of movies, movies you like, uh, and listen to the people around you. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really a late bloomer as far as screenwriting goes. I mean, I am really a late bloomer. But I think I can get there. I, I, I do want to say one thing about Anchorage today and filmmaking today in Anchorage. I think that Anchorage has the opportunity and the chance to become what Seattle was to music a few years back. 
Uh, we've got incredibly talented people here. We've got a, a bunch of really fine actors here and amazing crew people, people who, who understand cameras and who have a really good eye for what the cameras do. With the people who are here, we are right on the edge of doing something really amazing here, and I'm so happy to be part of it and so happy to be right here right now. All right, well, thank you, Jim. Glad to have been here, glad to have done it. Thank you. Well, that's all the time we have left for this episode of Alaska Filmmakers. We'd like to thank our host, Out North Theatre, and our guest, Jim McLean, for speaking with us today. If you would like to learn more about Jim McLean, you can find his LinkedIn information on our website, alaskafilmmakers.com. Thank you for joining us, and remember, everyone has a story to tell.